last year when Julia Leon came into the game I made a video about power creep because when he was first revealed and we got some of our first testing done the community felt like Julia Leon was just a bit better than other commanders in the game and that was the first time that people really started to put Lee Song Ye on the bench which marked a big change in power creep history in rise of kingdoms because Lee Song Ye was so good for so long that we thought surely we'll be using him forever and there's still many good uses for him and many players still do use him but my point in that video was that power creep in rise of kingdoms seemed like it had never been stronger but here we are one year later and in that time we got Huo and Justinian we got Gorgo and Liu Che we got Herman Prime with Osher Bonapal and we also got the ranged and leadership commanders in the form of Gonzalo Gajamata and Lapu Lapu but we also know the skills and talent trees for the new cavalry commanders that are coming very soon to rise of kingdoms that is Belisarius Prime and and Eleanor at some point last week they were actually added to the game a little bit earlier than the developers had wanted to it was a, I guess an accident after a few hours they were quickly removed but we could at least see their skills in game and we could confirm that they were exactly the same as their original reveal now at the time of recording this video Belisarius Prime and Eleanor do appear to already be in the Chinese version of Rise of Kingdoms and surprise surprise they are exactly as we saw in the original skill reveal now there were some rumors going around behind the scenes that their skills would be changed before they were released I don't know where that rumor came from it seems like that is not true and I also wanted to say right at the beginning of this video guys rushing to VIP support with questions like this is basically pointless a lot of times VIP support doesn't know anything about the commanders that aren't in the game yet okay so even if they're revealed it doesn't mean that VIP support has all the answers and unfortunately a lot of times VIP support will answer with conviction even when they don't actually know exactly what they're talking about and they're trying their best to be helpful and a lot of times they do a good job but they probably just get so many requests from so many players that they can't be 100 accurate all the time and so i think there's a lot of miscommunication that goes on there and players thought that maybe belisarius prime and eleanor would get buffed before their release but if we learn anything from the chinese version of the game it seems like that is not the case so in today's video i want to talk about power creep i want to revisit that topic like i did one year ago and i want to see how things have changed over the course of the past year are we in a worse place than we were before or are we in a better place than we were before and I think my answer might actually shock you guys so I hope you stick around but first what's going on guys cheers before we jump in about 69 percent of you guys are not subscribed so go down there click that button drop a thumbs up it really helps out the channel more than you think I don't just say that in these videos it genuinely helps out the channel so it's free please consider doing that but today's video is going to be more of a discussion so if you want grab a drink grab a snack or put me on in the background we're gonna have a little bit of a chat here okay so first of all we have to talk about what actually is power creep now if you've played other games before you're probably familiar with the term power creep essentially means that as content is added to a game and it doesn't necessarily have to be video games this is also true for example for card games like Yu-Gi-Oh like Pokemon trading card game right but typically in any sort of game as new expansions are released or as new updates come out or as new content is released a lot of times what developers will do is they'll make that new content a little bit stronger a little bit better and sometimes this comes in the form of again cards like in Yu-Gi-Oh or it could be the case like if you play World of Warcraft for example you may have some sort of equipment or best in slot gear trinkets artifacts whatever the case might be there could be a new borrowed power system okay and with each expansion there is a new stronger better thing that you can acquire and this is a pretty good incentive to get players to buy the new expansion or to play the new content or or for example hearthstone you know to buy the new packs because if the new stuff is stronger than the old stuff well then you'll have to get your hands on it in some way if you want to remain competitive and also from a player's perspective it's fun to continue to chase those new better things because you feel like you're making progress with your account or through the story or something like that and so you feel as a player like you're getting stronger over time and as they're adding new content you feel like you're getting better and better and so power creep isn't always a bad thing right sometimes power creep is the games for an incentive to get you to play and it's fun to collect the new shiny things and when it comes to rise of kingdoms I think there's multiple different layers of power creep in the game of course we have commanders that's mainly what we're talking about in this video so of course if you look at some of the earlier you know original commanders the gold key commanders for example these commanders typically are viewed by the community and just statistically they are performing worse in PvP scenarios than some of the newer commanders right you look at Cao Cao you compare that to Huo 
and it's night and day obviously one commander is much better than the other and it seemed to be for a while that the newer commanders were just always better or at least most of the time they were better or at least they were similar in power to the older stuff and you didn't even have to max them for example with Juge Leong you could do a 5-5-1-1 Juge Leong and it would be probably as good or better than a fully expertise Yi Song Ye right so that's one way that power creep is implemented into rise of kingdoms but of course we have the equipment system right so originally you know when I started playing the game there was no equipment system and then they introduced it and then they revamped it at some point and then you also have the special talents for the equipment but then now we have the iconic system right which originally just started as one iconic crystal and you got some bonus attributes but now there's tiers of that iconic system so you can go up to tier five iconic and so there's some power creep in the actual equipment system as well and also the armament system did not exist when I started playing the game and now they exist and we have you know inscriptions for these armaments as well and they've even added a new rare inscription for armaments that's just a little bit better than some of the basic inscriptions that you could have gotten before they've added new formations over time of course they've added things like crystal technology all these different systems are new forms of power creep but recently this is where things get a little bit controversial I'm gonna argue that the past two commander releases or reveals have been a bit underwhelming right we saw the release of Lapu Lapu Gonzalo and Gajamata now if you're building engineering commanders then these new engineering commanders are good they're like must have commanders at least Gonzalo is insane with Margaret right but for 95 99 percent of us people aren't really bought into engineering yet I think there needs to be maybe a little bit more power creep into the engineering commanders before we get there so maybe 2025 is going to be year of the ranged commander but on top of that Lapu Lapu for example is sort of a city garrison commander which most players aren't taking city rallies and so he's a very niche role he doesn't really move the needle for most players and then we see now of course with Belisarius Prime and Eleanor we know what their kits are they're already in the Chinese version of the game it looks like their skills are the same and so when we look at those commanders it looks to be the case or it seems to be the case that they're a little bit lukewarm right if you compare Belisarius Prime to Huo for example he's got less attack less defense his active skill is still a single target but it's a lower damage factor he has a worse talent tree he has the mobility tree now he does have a nice debuff but the rest of his kit is just a little bit lackluster and it's not an obvious upgrade over some of the commanders that we already have in the game and for example if we look at William if I'm not mistaken William is a fourth generation cavalry commander he came out at some point in 2020 so he's like a four-year-old commander and if you look at his kit here he's gonna deal more skill damage than Belisarius Prime if you hit at least two targets never mind that he can hit three I know his rectangle is a little bit weird but hitting two is reasonable I think you're gonna hit two most of the time he also has a nice little debuff here meaning the targets can't benefit from their increased skill damage and he also has more cavalry attack than Belisarius Prime he has nice March speed and 10% bonus damage outside of territory plus his instant proc damage is better than that of Belisarius Prime and on top of that he buffs your nearby armies with a really solid rage buff and bonus defense 20% defense for three seconds is really solid that's with this expertise even if it's not though it's still 10% for three seconds that's amazing so if you compare this commander from 2020 to Belisarius Prime who is coming in just a couple of days it seems to be the case that William is just point for point like DPS to DPS William is going to outperform Belisarius Prime now that's not the whole picture of course the debuff in Belisarius Prime is quite good and he does seem to have a nice niche role with his expertise to swarm things down we'll have to see how that actually works when he comes into the game but the fact that we're even comparing this new commander to a four-year-old cavalry commander is really saying a lot it seems to be the case that the new commanders aren't really anything that special and if we look at Eleanor sure you could make the argument that her paired with Jan Ziska if you put that in some sort of like pass or something like that something that can't be swarmed it could trade really really well and I think that's completely reasonable I think perhaps that was what they were going for with this but besides that if you look at Eleanor's kit and you look at Jan Ziska's kit I mean if you put them in a flag sorry but it's just gonna get swarmed down like it that's just the reality there's just not enough tankiness on that army to prevent it from getting swarmed now again we'll have to see some some in-game test results but like based on the last five years of understanding the game there's nothing on Eleanor's kit that would suggest that it would be performing well in a swarm and so if you have to pair with somebody that would be good at that such as Heraclius and maybe that will be fine but really you're not gonna probably want to run that over something like Gorgo Heraclius it's just not gonna be the 
same Dorgo is just the meta right now for garrisons as infantry always have been so when we look at those commanders and then again we compare it to commanders like Lapu Lapu and the more recent you know engineering commanders just not being as good like again I know that there's really great reports players are getting with Margaret and Gonzalo I've said from day one that even if they get good reports with them it's not necessarily going to make it meta right because you're just not going to convince players to run that over a CPO with Liu Che it's just not going to happen right so from a commander perspective if we look at the last two releases the power creep seems to really be dialed down and even if this is a very controversial statement that I'm going to make that even if we look at Herman Prime and Asher Bonapal, for example you know Asher Bonapal is just a slight improvement to Neb really like that's what it is they changed this 500 to a thousand for Asher Bonapal, and they gave him a little bit more stats he's got a really interesting expertise and he's definitely better than Nebu but it's not like his kit is something insane right it's it's a little bit better but it's nothing crazy and if we look at Herman Prime for example I know some players that have not benched their Boudicca Prime because they just don't see the value in Herman Prime now I disagree with that I think his AoE is insane I think his poison stacks are insane you have a nice defense reduction here a bump to AoE skill damage I think there's a lot to love about Herman Prime's kit I think he is part of the Archer meta right now best meta March in the game is Yuge Liang with Herman Prime no question in my mind there but if you look at infantry for example going from Sargon to Liu Che I think that was a huge jump right like Liu Che is way better than Sargon in my opinion whereas if you look at something like Boudicca Prime to Herman Prime it's like yes it's obviously a jump but it's it's a smaller jump in my mind Boudicca Prime is still usable whereas Sargon is one of the commanders that I regret investing in the most to be completely honest with you guys so from a commander perspective I think the power creep right now at this moment in time and this could change moving forward but at this exact moment in time I feel like the power creep has slowed down for commanders at least based on what we've seen from the last two cycles but that's not where this ends right because they've also added new formations you guys might not even really like have known this or, or have been paying attention because these formations are pretty irrelevant but testudo you take five percent less damage when you, have, when you have a shield and all healing received increased by two and a half percent and circle increases all healing by five percent these new formations like there's no clear and obvious use in my mind for these formations maybe a garrison would find some use out of these and maybe there's some available inscriptions for them that I'm not that I'm not seeing that are just like crazy good crazy broken but like if you compare these formations to something like the arch formation or the wedge formation these still seem like the better formations to pick in general for most players right and so here we have another example of the newer formations don't seem as impactful as the older formations just like with commanders another thing that I want to mention too is before they implemented the iconic tier system they were going to implement new equipment right they said they announced hey we're going to be releasing level 50 and 55 equipment and the entire you know the whale community went into an uproar and after the backlash on their announcement to adding new equipment they scrapped the idea and gave us the iconic tier system which is a form of power creep but it is linear and it does use existing materials and so I think if they had released level 55 equipment I think that would have been a bigger jump in power creep than just the incremental linear upgrade path or iconic tiers and so I think that's an example of a more slow approach to power creep in the equipment system and on top of that they've also implemented a way for us to reset the transmutations of our armaments with the transmutation crystals and and that makes it a little bit easier for players to use their existing pieces and try to get the most value out of them and finally if we look at some of the rewards for kbk there's actually more ways to get coins now than there were before I was going through this before we have this one obviously for 30 mil that's always been there if I remember correctly we've got this one we've got this one for spending crystals and getting some kills there's also coins in the conquest rewards here as well so there's one there's two there's three there's four or there's more ways to get the coins now than ever and they've also increased the amount of blueprints that you can get for these things in the shop as well and so with all of that being said it seems to me at this moment in time and I know this might sound like controversial but like I just provided you with like four or five bullet points of data 
that show that it seems like power creep is slowing down slightly okay at least slightly i think we can all agree that it's slightly slower than it was a year ago when we saw the introduction of Zhuge Liang. he is a must-have commander and we haven't seen a must-have commander in since probably Liu Che. So that opens up an interesting discussion about power creep in Rise of Kingdoms, the good, the bad, the ugly, and where can they take it from here? I personally think that if they are slowing down power creep in the game right now, I think it's because they've realized that there are so many systems in the game for players to work on. So they need commanders, they need equipment, they need iconic upgrades for that equipment. They also need armaments with inscriptions and they need crystal tech. And that implies that they've already gotten their buildings to level 25 and max you know t5 tech and everything like that and so there's a lot of systems for players to work on right now and perhaps they've realized that players just can't really keep up with all of it and so they've released a couple of lukewarm commanders in a row just to get players to start to realize like okay maybe i shouldn't be going all in on commanders maybe I should be spending more gems on things that are going to get me better equipment right I mean even right now we have Dalrook's puzzle box but we also have Esmeralda's prayer and the value for this has actually gone up this wheel looks better than it did before especially some of these later spin rewards you get six legendary materials and 10 legendary materials like that's actually crazy I'm probably going to be spinning this more than the wheel of fortune for Belisarius Prime because it's come to my attention that the best way for my account to gain power right now is through formations and armaments and also through my equipment and iconic upgrades which is saying a lot because for the longest time like commanders were that number one spot if you didn't have good commanders you couldn't perform well but now we're in a spot where like even if you have commanders from you know four years ago you still can perform well in the open field now i'm not saying william is the best cavalry commander of the game but i used him this kvk he performed just fine and you know even still we can look at joan of arc she came out at the end of 2022 so even joan has been around for like a year and a half at this point if not a little bit longer and you can still perform really well with those commanders that came out back then and needless to say nevsky i mean of course nevsky still pops off in the open field and i even perform well with guan yu who came out i think before william the first right like this is probably the oldest usable commander in the game in the field right now which is shocking i recruited him in january of 2020 bro that's crazy over four years ago and that's not to mention that you can literally get some of these great commanders from the daily special offer now which is it's just insane value for players that are returning to the game so if power creep is slowing down right now i think that you know a lot of players would argue that's a good thing especially if you're a free to play player and i can get on board with that but there are some pros to power creep as well like there are some good things about having power creep in the game and so for example like i said earlier new commanders that are better than old commanders give players a new thing to work towards and also it gives older players new sort of toys to play with right like this is the latest greatest thing it comes out and you want to get it you want to get your hands on it so that way you can you know deal damage in the open field and just see how good you can perform with the latest greatest stuff if we have slower power creep well you know for me personally i'm looking at belisarius prime as a skip i'm just probably not going to get him it just doesn't seem worth it to bench my william for that commander i mean we'll see how test results come out but like based on everything we've seen it just doesn't feel like it's going to be worth it maybe if he was aoe maybe if his active skill debuff was aoe maybe if you know i don't know but it just it doesn't really seem like it moves the needle for me and so i'm going to go a few more months without investing in a new legendary commander which sucks because i have a lot of sculptures that i have saved up and i don't really know what to do with them and this number is only going to grow over the next few months until we get what i suspect to be the next release which will be probably infantry which i'm excited about that infantry are in a really good place right now better than they've been in a very long Long time especially because they've already announced a third tier of relic for commanders like charles martel and pyrus but they've also added or they're adding a second tier of relic for alexander great which is going to give him 20 percent defense which is very very nice for him he definitely needed that so infantry are in, are in a great place right now and if their next release is half as good as liu che they'll be in an even better place with slower power creep we don't get those new toys as often as we would want them so we're missing out on that advantage of the power creep but another advantage of power creep is that 
that it rewards players who plan and strategize their investments in commanders so for example like I said before I have over a thousand sculptures saved because I know how these things go I've been playing the game for years now and I know that you don't want to be caught with your pants down so to speak right if they drop a new commander that is meta breaking it's a must-have you want to be able to max it right away that way you can get the most value out of it as soon as possible and because you know if you don't have that latest greatest thing and everyone else in the field does then you're going to get clapped your reports are going to be bad you're going to have a higher hospital bill and so players that you know watch these videos and they know how to strategize are rewarded for hoarding those sculptures and doing the smart thing and i think it's a good idea for strategy games to have something like that it's good to reward players for playing correctly because then they get a payoff they get a benefit they get that dopamine hit of like oh yeah i waited for this moment and now i get to dominate on the open field with the latest greatest stuff but if we don't have that if, if people are hoarding sculptures for belisarius prime and then he comes into the game and he's trash then it's like ooh, that's kind of a bummer right like what am i playing for also power creep gives developers the ability to sort of fine tune how rally and garrison meta works right and so they're finding based on their data which you better believe that they have tons of data for the current rally and garrison meta if they see that okay rallies seem to be a little little bit overpowered right now because let's say everyone swarms with the rally and it makes garrisons pop really quickly well then they can introduce a new broken garrison that's really strong and maybe that balances things out a little bit and so you're not uh, you know so disadvantaged if you're on the defensive end right or likewise if the gorgo garrison is just too powerful and even their latest and greatest you know rally meta isn't enough and maybe they can release a new cav rally that's even better than the last one right and so it gives the developers a way to fine tune how the meta is working and again if they keep releasing like these mundane sort of lukewarm commanders then we don't get that big change in the open field or the rally garrison meta which ends up being a little bit boring depending on how many months that stays the same the final thing that i want to say about about power creep and this is a double-edged sword is that if there is tremendous power creep then it actually might make it easier for players who quit the game to come back to the game and that might sound confusing but think of it this way like right now as a brand new player you can literally just you can buy cpo prime for five dollars right where is he he's in the he's in the daily special offer you can literally just get him you can literally just get nevsky right away and so if you played the game three years ago and your best commanders in the open field are like saladin with with william right and that just doesn't cut it anymore well now you can jump back in you can purchase nevsky and you're popping off you're doing great you've got a great commander that is still part of the meta and you can get your hands on him much easier than before and this is also true like they put you know mightiest governor commanders in here as well so it's sort of like a catch-up mechanic right and this also happens in games like world of warcraft where you know the next patch comes out and the latest easy to obtain drops from the newest raid outclass the best in slot things from the hardest you know level of rating from last season a lot of players hate that but if you're just jumping back into the game right now well it's like okay well i can easily catch up by just getting my hands on that gear and so that is sort of a good thing depending on how you look at it but from a for a returning player i think it is good to get your hands or to make it easier for you to get your hands on the current meta but there are some cons to the power creep as well right like for example if power creep is too strong in a game then again you just have irrelevant old content you know these older commanders like you really can't do anything with them there's nothing you know impactful that you can do in the late game besides support skills they're, they're just kind of useless and that feels really bad especially when they're also legendary commanders they're they're allegedly on the same tier as the newer stuff but it's obviously not the case so much so that even with like museum relics they're irrelevant like it, we look at you know the cons relic it didn't move the needle at all we look at Ragnar's relic didn't really move the needle at all Charlemagne Barca these are all commanders that you know they have double relics at this point and it's still like they're still so old and so power crept that even with double or even triple relics like is anyone really gonna start to use Martel once he has 50 percent attack I'm not like there's just no reason for me to do that right I have better options it's not he didn't need more stats he needed more tools in his tool belt right he needed more you know normal damage or something like that. like he needed something else but they gave him more more attack and that's you know it's going to be great for players that are new players moving into season of conquest they can maybe use you know Martel a little bit more effectively but at the end of the day he's still super power crept and the other downside of power creep too is that it punishes players for investing in those earlier commanders right you just start rising games today you start buying bundles for Cao Cao, you purchase minimum moto nine months later you enter kbk 
three and you're like oh my god look at all these commanders that I, I didn't even know these commanders were in the game would I have would I have invested in those commanders had I known that these new ones were here like probably not right probably not and so it makes you feel like you're wasting your money and time on content that literally is obsolete as soon as you enter kvk3 also you kind of are training players to hoard your sculptures right like that's what I've learned to do hoard your sculptures that way you are ready for the next best thing but hoarding sculptures and hoarding materials and blueprints and all that stuff you know if players are too paranoid to invest in anything well then they get bored of the game and they quit and that's not a good place to be in either right you have to at least have new things that are safe investments for players to invest in things like you know William was a great investment Guan Yu was a great investment Nevsky was a great investment Yu Liang great investment these are all things that I don't regret at all and I won't regret for you know a while and even still like even if they get power prep now I, I don't really care because I've gotten my use out of them more than enough I got the value and also if there is too much power creep in the game then players might feel like it's only there to get them to spend more money right and I mean I mean that's part of that is true you know this is a, a business right like it costs money to keep rise of kingdoms in, in development right people are designing the artwork here they have to pay to keep the servers online they have tech support and vip chat and all this other stuff you know they need you know coders all sorts of expenses are are taken on by the company to keep rise of kingdoms a live service game a game that you know continues to pump out new updates regularly and in order to pay for that people have to have something to spend their money on right which is, is completely fair i don't mind spending money in the game that is constantly entertaining me with new things but if there is so much power creep that it feels like you know one system after another is just non-negotiable you have to spend on it well then some players are going to feel like that might be a little bit too much for them and they might stop playing the game and that might be one of the reasons why we've seen some slowdown in the power creep department at least for commanders because people just feel like okay well there's just too much every release is something that I need it's like I can't afford to do that right and so that's completely fair and I think players have been begging Lilith to slow down their release cycle and I think the approach that they might be taking instead is to just release some commanders that are a little bit lackluster right like Lapu Lapu I mean it sucks because I know for all my Filipino viewers like Lapu Lapu is a legend right which is awesome and I'm happy he's in the game like that's super super cool to have that representation but like it would have been awesome if he was a really good commander right like that would have been great but you know needless to say he's not that great and so the fact that we got him in the game it's kind of like the developers are just saying like hey don't worry you don't need to get this commander but at the end of the day there is an ugly side of power creep and I think this might be what they're trying to avoid and that is that it is not sustainable in the long run right like last year when I made my video talking about power creep I specifically said like hey this is like you're not gonna be able to do this forever eventually players are gonna be like they're gonna get sick of it right if every new commander was a Zhuge Liang people would just not be able to keep up and they would just quit the game and so I think it's good that they've had some commanders revealed now um and confirmed that aren't as great as some of the things in the meta already and kind of the flip side to what I talked about earlier in the video with power creep you know if you can easily obtain or more easily obtain some of the newer meta things then it's good for returning players but if you can't and it's inaccessible and the power creep is too high then it's almost impossible for players to return to the game they just can't get they can't break it back into the meta because there's years worth of power creep that they've missed out on so really fine tuning that dial is is the name of the game so then we have to ask ourselves well which direction can they go here right there are different routes that they can take they can increase the power creep to keep players engaged and having fun but they run the risk of you know burning players out or they can tone it down and make it easier for free-to-play players to catch up but some of the older whale players might get bored and they just lose interest and so there's a few different directions right the first direction that they could go is sort of the Yu-Gi-Oh direction and I have used this example on the channel before but back in the day the dark magician card all on its own was a very powerful card it had a high attack stat decent defense it was just a vanilla beat stick back then there weren't that many monsters in the game that could attack over it like of course you had blue eyes white dragon trihorn dragon there were others gate guardian those types of cards Obvious, I'm not saying this was the best card in the game but obviously Dark Magician was a boss monster he was a strong card and he was the card that was used by the protagonist in the anime for a reason he had 
have a lot of support he was really really good but if you try to play Yu-Gi-Oh today a vanilla dark magician on the field alone is not going to do anything because you have cards like this which questionable artwork some players are going to absolutely love that other players are going to be off put by the complete change in art direction but even still this is you know there's a special way that you can summon this monster it's a lot easier than sacrificing or tributing two cards for dark magician and got the same amount of attack at least but it's also unaffected by trap effects and activated effects of other monsters with the same type as this card's material right and there's two materials and so there's a whole paragraph there's a whole friggin book down here of text of things that this card can do this card cannot do even though they have the same amount of attack this card's easier to get on the field it has more utility one for one it's just a better card now I haven't played Yu-Gi-Oh for a few years I don't I'm not familiar with trap tricks to be honest with you but I think you get my point point. and if Rise of Kingdoms goes the Yu-Gi-Oh route where they just keep implementing new sets and new sets and there's new better archetypes and new better metas than the old ones then eventually it is unimaginably confusing for newer players and the game is unapproachable right so for example I love Yu-Gi-Oh I played it for years I even played it all the way up through like Z's and everything like that but once they added pendulums and link monsters it just got to a point where it was like there's so many different things to keep track of that even as an experienced player I just quit I was like this is stupid I don't need I I, don't, I can't keep up with this right and if I wanted to return today could I do it sure I could learn the game but it's not worth it it's too complex it's too it's not the game that I used to like and it's strayed so far from that and so the same thing could be said for rise of kingdoms if they continue down that path eventually you get commanders with so many like walls of text for every single skill it's like oh my god if you're a new player are you going to really read all these skills all the time probably not you're going to have to know what all these different things are like i don't know it just it, it's going to get too complicated for new players especially if we see like this it's there's an autumn wind effect in, in the first 15 seconds of battle but only if you waited 30 seconds before fighting and it's like all, all this micromanagement stuff and you know they run the risk of going down the Yu-Gi-Oh route but there are benefits to the Yu-Gi-Oh route and that is that you know for Yu-Gi-Oh they can go back and they can add support for older content so for example blue eyes white dragon has more support now than it ever has before there's new types of blue eyes white dragon cards and there's new ways to summon blue eyes white dragon and there's new fusions and z's and, and synchros and all this other stuff and they've supported that old card that old archetype that players love and likewise they could do that in rise of kingdoms sort of like what they're doing with the museum system just like how we're getting museum relics for attila and takeda and updated relics for all of the infantry commanders so it seems to be so far that they've been going down the Yu-Gi-Oh route and there's I mean that's a huge red flag for me I'm gonna say it right now like there there are some really big downsides to going that route and just to prove it to you Yu-Gi-Oh is less popular now than it has ever been I mean even if we just do a quick you know Google trend search for Yu-Gi-Oh the search term I know there's other terms that you could use you know it's a little higher now than I thought it would be but like this is arguably the lowest it's ever been like maybe down here last in 2021 it was a little bit less popular now they've got like mobile apps and and you know there's a game on Steam I think it's called Master Duel so there's a couple of things that maybe are sort of reviving the game but it's nowhere near what it was back in 2011 or especially back when it first came out in like 2003 2004 Yu-Gi-Oh was the thing like that first Christmas the first holiday season that Yu-Gi-Oh came out it was more popular than Pokemon which is like an unbelievable statistic that I can't even fathom because Pokemon is the biggest like media franchise in the world so for Yu-Gi-Oh to be more popular than that even if it was only for one holiday season it's still crazy right it's still crazy to have that sort of power to fall from grace so hard is insane now the game's been around 20 years which is like that's still impressive but I think it's still riding off that early success. And I just would hate to see Rise of Kingdoms go down that rabbit hole. Whereas if we look at the Pokemon trading card game, another card game that's been around forever, you could see in recent years, it's actually gotten really, really popular. Now I know this is not apples to apples. There's other reasons why it got popular pandemic, you know, pricing of old cards, all that stuff. There was a lot of hype around it, but even still, you see my point. And I think the Pokemon trading card game is actually a good example of how power creep can be done. So for example, in the Pokemon trading card game, it actually works different than in Yu-Gi-Oh. And what I mean by this is that there are sort of formats in the Pokemon trading card game where, you know, the current tournament format only uses the more recent sets of cards that have come out and so if there was a broken Pokemon card that came out three years ago or four years ago well you can't legally use that card in a tournament today unless it's reprinted in a newer set and so what that does is it kind of keeps the power creep in check 
because it's you know over time they're sort of shedding the weight of the older things because you know if you look at rise of kingdoms every time they put something new into the game it has to be balanced with everything that's already in the game and that gets harder and harder as you add more things and i think that we're probably never going to see a a smite damage cavalry commander because of attila right i just don't think that they're going to be able to balance that effectively we already see attila working in things like gorgo garrisons for the kvks where you can change his troop type to infantry it's actually kind of crazy and so attila kind of prevents them from moving in that direction at least that's my assumption i assume that that is the case and i think that's it's reasonable to arrive at that conclusion but imagine a world where we have something after season of conquest so perhaps kvk's season three through eight you get to use all the commanders that are in the game right now but what if there was something after season of conquest that made it so that way you couldn't really use these older commanders now i know that would be awful for players who invested in them and there would have to be some way of you getting value out of those commanders i'm not saying that they should just you know force you to throw them in the garbage which let's be fair you're kind of already doing that right like yes you could use a gold key commander but you never would use a gold key commander because you would just get destroyed in the open field so if they had a you know kvk format that was beyond season of conquest that made it so you couldn't really use some of these ultra powerful you know kvk season three and beyond commanders like liu che like yu liang what if they released a kvk format that just said okay let me just make up a term what if we call it season of warfare okay let's call it season of warfare and that comes after season of conquest right so what if they said okay in season of warfare you can use kvk one and two commanders but you can't use season of conquest commanders that would be crazy right because all of a sudden now you'd be able to use some of the older commanders again so if you invested in them before now you get value out of them again why she makes a return minamoto makes a return alexander the great is still amazing but then they implement season of warfare commanders right and they sort of start that power creep cycle over again where they can make a really powerful commander in you know season of warfare that maybe you know like for example belisarius prime he looks super underwhelming compared to what we have already in season of conquest but what if he was a season of warfare commander going up against all these kvk one and two commanders well he's going to be meta right he's going to be meta and so it would give them more of a way to kind of shed the weight of all the stuff that they already have in the game they won't have to worry about oh is this going to be balanced with Guan Yu silence oh is this going to be balanced with the circular AOA oh is this going to be balanced with Trajan in the field like oh my god I, they won't have to worry about that because season of warfare all those commanders are in the garbage right now again I know that I'm this is I'm taking this example to the extreme saying that they're thrown in the garbage in season of conquest they're effectively thrown in the garbage anyway so like let's just be clear I'm not, I'm not being that outrageous right like I know there's a difference between them not being meta and them being completely like locked and impossible to use I get that there is a difference there especially from a player psychology perspective and I'm not saying that they should do that but what if we go into season of warfare and all of your season of conquest commanders you know lose 40 percent of their stats or something like that I don't know that would be kind of like them taking the Pokemon approach where you have formats that change over time and that would give them more room to introduce new things without just completely breaking the game and having all this insane power creep right now there is power creep in Pokemon as well I'm not gonna pretend like there's not you have more hit points now than ever and every format has its own gimmick you know you have the EX monsters and, and all, whatever but you get the point I think that that would be another route that they could take and I don't know which route is better right now it seems like they've slowed down the power creep in the game which I think for right now is probably a good thing I think that Belisarius Prime and Eleanor being sort of lukewarm is a good thing the fact that Lapu Lapu and, and range commanders are lukewarm is a good thing but eventually they're gonna have to put more power creep in the game so that way players have something to work on for me like me for example I don't really have anything to work on right now and that's kind of boring so I'm working on my equipment I'm working on my armaments and things like that which is fine I still have things to do and I feel good about my investments that I've already made because I've gotten good value out of them for a long time but eventually they will have to add more power creep into the game and so do they take the Yu-Gi-Oh approach of just constantly adding newer commanders with bigger numbers on their skills that's it route they could go or they could take the Pokemon approach and say okay after season of conquest you enter season of warfare season of discovery season of whatever and here's the new list of commanders that you can use now and they take a new sort of more creative approach to that I think that could be a little bit more fun without you know because eventually you know if you if you take the the current strategy to its logical extreme soon we're going to start to see 3,000 damage factor single target 2,500 AOE beyond that it'll be 
3200 single target and 2800 AO. like we're eventually going to get to a point where it's like we're going to need higher troop capacities to compensate for that otherwise commanders are going to just get one shot in the open field rallying garrisons are going to be even more stormable than ever right and so you end up into all these weird late game complexities that could be solved by doing a more format approach and i think that's probably what they were trying to do with call of dragons but they also like reset the progress of all the commanders and stuff like that i, I don't know that was just that's a whole topic for another video i talked about why i quit that game but anyway that's kind of my long-winded rant on power creep in rise of kingdoms i think right now they have tuned down the power creep which is currently a good thing in my opinion but i think moving forward they're going to have to recalibrate and see like what are we going to do moving forward what is the long-term strategy what is the long-term goal here we'll have to wait and see and either way i'm just excited for the next infantry release i hope it claps i hope it is popping off in the field i hope we get more smite damage god tier things like liu che because that would make cavalry players so mad they would be so butthurt if infantry got another Liu Che, that would be amazing. I would love that. Oh my God. Cavalry has only been open field meta for four years now. It's not fair that infantry and archers get a chance. It's bullshit. Relax. Anyway, with that being said, guys, if you're into the end of the video, I hope you drop a thumbs up on it. It really helps out the channel. It helps get this video out into the YouTube algorithm. So other rise of kingdoms players might see it. And of course, comment down below what you think about power creep. What strategy do you think that they should take for the future of rise of kingdoms should they do the seasonal approach like you know the formats in pokemon tcg or should they do the more Yu-Gi-Oh approach that they've already been taking of just getting more commanders with bigger numbers and just see where that goes i would love to hear from you in the comments section below what do you think about some of the examples that i've given here and while you're down there subscribe to the channel and click the bell to be notified the next time i upload a rise of kingdoms video and with that being said guys thank you so much for watching this has been omniarch i will talk to you guys again soon peace